You're listening to the Back Porch Talk Podcast. Danny and Jason had many discussions and debates on the back porch while making pivotal investment moves with assets. That's right, with trading cards. They welcome you to the back porch and right into those discussions about current sports news with a fresh and unique twist. So come on and join us. Welcome to the Back Wars Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Jason. It's your host, Danny. And fans, we have a great show for you today. A little NFL talk. And then we'll talk a little bit about Coach Reed, or is he a coach? But first, Danny, to the uh, NFL, where we had some interesting games uh, this past weekend. The Jacksonville Jaguars uh, against the Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs prevails 27-20. Uh, and then also the Giants versus the Eagles, and where it wasn't much of a game. Uh, 38-7, Eagles prevail. Uh, the big story for Saturday, in my opinion, was Patrick Mahomes getting injured, a uh, high ankle sprain um, that they are, are working on right now. But you have to give some credit here to the young Jacksonville Jaguars crew. Uh, I think they have something to build upon here. They have a good foundation. Uh, watch out for them uh, in the AFC South. Uh, come next year, but more importantly, just in the AFC as a whole. Uh, I think they're going to be something to really uh, uh, contend with, and folks got to watch out for Jacksonville. Duval, uh, then what say you about uh, the Saturday games? The Jacksonville Jaguars, add one point to that, they also get Calvin Ridley next year. Mm -hmm. So you add Calvin Ridley, we'll see what kind of receiver he'll be. You know, he's been suspended for the year. But I think he'll have a lot to prove next year. And you add, a, I'm saying a number one receiver to that lineup of receivers they already have and the running game. So they have a lot to look forward to, man. They play mm -hmm. Kansas City tough. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick Mahomes had a similar injury. We'll talk about Dallas in a few, but it looked just like Tony Pollard's leg. And for him to come back and play through that, Chad Henney came in. Did his thing. He drove down uh, that 98-yard touchdown drive he had in the uh, end of the second quarter. Helped keep them afloat until Patrick Mahomes came back in the second half. So Jacksonville's right there, man. They fumbled. They had a lot of turnovers in that fourth quarter where if they didn't have those turnovers, it could have been a different game. So kudos to them for hanging tough and for the Chiefs, man, to pull that one out because there was a lot of emotion going up and down with the injury to Patrick Mahomes and, you know, changing quarterbacks and everything. So they get that next game at uh, Arrowhead Stadium on Sunday. And as far as the Eagles-Giants game, no one knew really what to expect from the Eagles. So the Giants are coming in with that momentum based on what they did to Minnesota. Jalen Hurts came in, showed out. Three touchdowns, two in the air, one rushing. He really didn't get – he mentioned this, too, in his post game, uh, as far as his shoulder. He really didn't get hit. So he seemed to be okay. And the Eagles came out and destroyed the Giants. <laughs> so, right. Uh, so they're ready, and we'll see what they do next week at the Vet. And, Danny, the Sunday games, to me, were the more intriguing games. Uh, the Bengals-Bills game – uh, which was rematched from a, a few weeks ago here, uh, Hamlin. It was good to see him in the uh, suite uh, there uh, present at the game. Uh, but the Bengals go as it goes ahead and prevails here, man, 27-10. It wasn't even close. The Bengals just came out, just throttled the Bills, man. Uh, first quarter, 14 nut and a half, 17-7. I mean, Joe Burrow just had a game for you, man. Ever since Joe Burrow gotten into the uh, league, man, he has been tearing it up. Uh, 23 for 36, 242 yards, two touchdowns for Joe Burrow. Um, they had a good running game with Joe Mixon, 20 carries, 105 yards. Uh, Jamar Chase uh, has a touchdown. Hayden Hurst has a touchdown. The Bengals' offense is just potent, man. When you have those type of receivers – uh, good quality receivers. You got to watch out for that particular offense. I don't know what the Bengals going to do uh, here in the near future when it comes to trying to pay all these receivers. Somebody's going to bolt to get paid. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, you got to think about T. Higgins. You have to think about the Jamar Chases. Uh, we'll get into picks here later on, but 
man, uh, Cincinnati Bengals, they're going to be tough. They're going to be tough. Uh, Josh Allen had a, a pedestrian game, 25 for 42, 265, but had an interception. Uh, you saw a little spat there on the sideline uh, with Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen, uh, more so Stephon Diggs venting frustration uh, towards Josh Allen. Um, I, I don't know, Danny. I think this may be something uh, to honestly look out for, uh, especially in the offseason. I don't know how the Bills really come from this because this was supposed to be the Bills' year. Yep. This was supposed to be the year that they actually get some get back against Kansas City for last year's playoff game, epic playoff game in uh, Arrowhead Stadium. Uh, but it just wasn't to be for the Buffalo Bills. Um, and Bills, they're going to have to stay at home while uh, the Cincinnati Bengals uh, move on. What say you about this game, Danny? Great game by Cincinnati. Actually, Jamar Chase actually should have had two touchdowns in this game. Man, I tell you, sometimes some of these calls, <laughs> it just makes you want to shake your head. But all in all, great game by Cincinnati coming in on the road in the snow and doing Buffalo like they did. This comes the question, man. I know we're about to talk about Dallas and San Francisco, but somebody has to say something about Buffalo. Because they have all these expectations. They spend this money. You know, they spent a lot of money in the offseason. And they're coming up small in the playoffs. Wins enough, enough. So I'm curious how they handle this team next year if they keep everyone together. Because, like you mentioned, Steph Diggs was the one that was like, he, I'm not, he just can't take it, man. He can't take the losing. You get there, you do all this in the regular season, then you come up short in the playoffs. So, Buffalo has some soul searching to do, man, to see what they can do to make get them to the Super Bowl and what may be the missing piece for them. Or if there's a coaching change that needs needs to happen, not necessarily the head coach, but uh, coordinator. But congratulations to Cincinnati, man. A great game by them. And on to Kansas City for a great matchup. And you alluded to this with – the Dallas Cowboys and San Francisco 49ers. I, I watched this for nostalgia's sake, uh, mm -hmm. but I was really interested to see how this game was going to shake out. Um, I always heard about uh, the 49ers defense. Cowboys defense came to play as well. Dak Prescott, 23 for 37, one touchdown, two interceptions, two critical interceptions against Brock Purdy, third stringer, 19 for 29, 214 yards. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was the last pick in the draft. So Mr. Irrelevant became relevant in beating <laughs> <laughs> that breast press type led uh, Dallas Cowboys, Danny. Ezekiel Elliott, 10 carries, 26 yards. Uh, Tony Pollard, before he got injured, six carries, 22 yards, injured for the season. Uh, C.D. Lamb uh, took over the uh, best that he could in the second half upon Pollard's injury. Uh, 10 receptions for 117 yards. Danny, Cowboys defense showed up to play. Um, there were several plays in there. I, it was, I love the going back and forth uh, between the two teams uh, defensively. And that that was something it, it was good to see, um, a grind them out type game. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the 49ers and the Eagles, you know, match up and how that really flows. Uh, but Danny, the Cowboys come up short once again. Jerry, I'm certain, is disappointed. He has said that he's disgusted or he's sick. Uh, probably sick because the defense showed up, the championship defense showed up. Offense did not put a lot of money in the, on the offensive side of the ball, and they did not show up. Uh, Danny, is that the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys moving forward? I think that's the question that everybody has. Mm -hmm. Is M Mike McCarthy the coach for the Dallas Cowboys? Is Kellen Moore the offensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys? I think there's a, a few questions that need to be answered in the Dallas Cowboys offseason, uh, along with uh, whether or not Ezekiel Elliott is that running back. Mm -hmm. um, so what say you about this 49ers Cowboys game? Jason, I would say 
one thing of note is the Dallas Cowboys defense dropped three interceptions <laughs> in this game, which could have actually turned it in their favor, even though their offense wasn't playing up to par. They make those picks. I think they uh, actually win this game. 49ers, I think they they Purdy did enough, even though they picked, dropped those picks to get them over the hump. He made some key throws. Uh, Kittle made a crazy catch at the, in that fourth quarter uh, that kept the drive alive, and they ended up scoring with McCaffrey. They're on to face Philadelphia. As far as the Cowboys are concerned, we'll see because, like Dan Quinn, that's his defense, but he's interviewing. And that also goes to some of this as well with these coaches. And they talked about it in some of the pregame shows as far as these OCs and DCs and assistant coaches interviewing during the playoffs. And does some of that actually affect the team and the focus? As far as Dak is concerned, unless you're making a trade for a, a different quarter, I don't see anybody to take Dak's place. Uh, I think their receiving core is CeeDee Lamb's awesome, uh, but I think they need another receiver in there to complement CeeDee Lamb. Uh, we'll see what Dalton Schultz does. He's a free agent this offseason. And what they do, uh, Pollard with the broken leg, the fibula, When's he going to be back? Will he be ready for the season? Zeke started off the season strong, but he ended up, he, he just looks slower in the playoffs. So everyone should stay, stay in pat unless, um, and then it just depends on his coordinator, McCarthy's coordinators and take one more shot at it. But I think they do need a receiver on the offensive side of the ball to compliment CD lamb and take some of the pressure off of him and actually uh, open the field up a little bit for Dak. And that brings us to Championship Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, first, starting with the 49ers uh, traveling to uh, the Eagles. Uh, that's the 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time game. Danny, who do you have in this game? I know the 49ers are scorching hot. They haven't lost in <laughs> 12 games. But... I think Philly has it has what it takes to slow them down and put some pressure on Purdy and and them going cross country and everything in that environment. And with Philadelphia playing the way they did last week to get some of those some of that rust and everything and get some momentum built up, I think Philly defeats the 49ers. I can see it being a close game though, because 49ers have they have playmakers with Debo and McCaffrey. So it's not going to be easy for Philly to win this game because Philly can get gouged on the ground. And that's where McCaffrey and Elijah Mitchell can uh, do some damage and Debo for that, for that matter. But I'm going to go with Philly. How about you, Jay? This is a tough game right here, man. 49ers defense, yeah, Bosa. But it's something about Philly, man. Um, I think this is going to be a close game. It's something about uh I, I think Purdy, he, he I think he's bound to make a couple of mistakes here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh 49 are gonna try to ease him into the game to get him comfortable. I think the Eagles are, are gonna pick up on that and blitz the hell mm -hmm. out of them. Um so I I'm leaning towards the Eagles on this one, uh albeit uh close, but I, I think the Eagles might get them here. That leads us to the uh, second game of the uh, championship Sunday. Uh, Bengals traveling to the Kansas City Chiefs. Who you have in this one, Danny? <laughs> now, this was tough. You don't know the condition of Patrick Mahomes, but they are at home. I, I'm going to go with the upset here. I'm going to go with Cincinnati. I think Cincinnati can get them in – I'm basing this right now based on what I'm hearing about Mahomes in the news and they're working on that ankle. And if he's playing, if he's any sort of hobbled, you saw last week what they're doing to Josh Allen. They're blitzing the mess out of Josh Allen. So if they're blitzing Mahomes, granted he has Kelsey as that safety valve, but I just think Cincinnati can get them in this game just because of Mahomes. If Mahomes was fully healthy, I would have took Kansas City. But I'm going to go Cincinnati in this matchup. How about you, Jay? It doesn't matter if Mahomes is healthy or not. I was going to pick the Bengals on this one. And I think it's going to be the Bengals big on this one. 
I don't think he's going to be even close. Um, I'm thoroughly impressed with Cincinnati. They beat Kansas City last year to get to the championship, to get to the Super Bowl. I think they're going to do it again. They have every bit of confidence going into this championship Sunday where they've beaten the Buffalo Bills. And now I think we need to start thinking about Joe Burrow being, you're calling for the upset. I'm not even seeing this considered an upset. I'm considered, I think it's an upset if the Chiefs were to win, quite frankly. I got, we, we both got Cincinnati going to the Super Bowl. So we got Bengals, Eagles in the bowl. Championship Sunday is going to be interesting. And Jason, one point on the Bengals, which Buffalo really didn't expose, was that offensive line. So they had three replacements. Mm-hmm. So if Kansas City can get pressure on Burrow and make him uncomfortable, that's their chance to win. Because Buffalo did not expose that offensive line. They didn't blitz at all. So if Kansas City, and they have some dogs up front, so if they can get at Burrow and make him uncomfortable and he makes a couple mistakes, there's Kansas City's chance. And now, Danny, on to uh, a topic that has gone uh, across the HBCU community. Ed Reed uh, is no longer uh, in line to become the Bethune-Cookman University head football coach uh, based upon the, his rant, uh, his social media rant, uh, regarding some of the things that he has seen and witnessed on uh, campus. And Danny, let me just say this. Um, This comes after uh, some discussions about ratifying his contract, uh, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Uh, Both sides have come out with a full-blown statement. The statement is out there in the dog. The film Cooking University um, provided a long statement that uh, basically indicates, uh, basically upon further review uh, or after going under undergoing a detailed assessment and review of the state of our football program, we have determined that it is in the best interest of our university athletic program and football student athletes to reopen the search and identify the next leader of Bethune Cookman Wildcats football. And it it goes on and on, Danny. Uh, And and let me just say this. Um, There was another video that was posted by, I don't know who posted it, but it was, of uh, Ed Reed giving up, uh, some would say a passionate speech. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I believe uh, Deion Sanders um, talked to uh, Ed Reed uh, as well. There are rumors, reports, I don't know how true they are about Ed Reed having uh, donors lined up to provide funding for whether it's new facilities or just to help with the program in general. I don't know how true, we don't know how true those rumors are. Mm-hmm. Um, and if he did, um, I'm hoping that those individuals uh, continue to give to Bethune Cookman, regardless of uh, Ed, Reed, Red Be- Ed Reed being there. But I don't know, Danny. I, I think we got to look at Ed Reed, yes, as a passionate person. But we also have to look at it from the standpoint of what's the best interest of the student athletes. I think the time that he was there, uh, unofficially as the head football coach, we have to, uh, he was giving them pride, showing them pride, picking up trash around the university, et cetera. So my hope is that that continues to happen. I think there's been protests about Ed Reed um, and Dahl, but nonetheless, I think it's something that, uh, will be in the news moving forward. What say you, Danny, about the situation? Jason, I saw the video where he was FaceTiming or whatever with Dion, and, you know, he was up on the podium. And to see that and to see that walk out the door from a, from a student athlete's perspective is very tough uh, because it just showed he cared, you know, at least – the way he portrayed it and it, it's tough to see him go and how this whole situation just went from up up to down really fast <laughs> and it was it's just tough man it's it's hard to understand what happened behind closed doors 
And, you know, like you said, the students are protesting, but it was just tough to see. Because when we saw first saw this, when he they first announced that he was coaching them uh, a little while back, it was like, OK, here we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's another person who has a, a lineage and lines in the NFL. Like you said, he has people that he's played ball with that could help the university from a fundraising perspective, the community. And to see that just walk out the door. Mm-hmm. I can't wait till there's actually the full stories out there that we can understand from Bethune Cookman's perspective, why it wasn't just what he, he posted on social media. And it's, it's just tough, man, just to see him and what he was trying to do and accomplish. So I'm hoping for Ed Reed's point of view or perspective that he gets to do what he wants to do. So I don't know if he's going to take time away or what he's going to do, but he looked like he was head over heels to knock this out the park and they pulled the rug from under his feet. And I'm curious, like I said, see what happens with Ed Reed and, Hopefully he ends up somewhere where he can actually uh, make a positive impact. Let me ask you this, Danny. Do you think Ari brought this upon himself, though? He did, but I think it was his intent to call some stuff out. Mm -hmm. Because it's like any, any one of us, if you go into a job or a situation and you're like, all right, I'm here, but can we make some changes? And the way the world works now, back in our day, that stuff would have been handled behind the behind the scenes. You may have gotten to a camera or, you know, like an ESPN or something, but now where you can just have that phone in your hand and videotape and say how you feel. And if it rubs people the wrong way, that's the downfall of it. But do you think he is going to get another opportunity. I think so. I think there's so many opportunities to have someone, like I said, with that that knowledge base, that experience, mm-hmm. those connections, and just knowing the game the way he does, and you have the support of, you know, your brethren, it would it would make total sense for another college or even the NFL, depending on where he wants to go. But it looked like he really wanted to be in the college game and actually change some lives. So if that's the case, man, I think a school would be foolish not to hire him. Uh, He's very outspoken. But at the same time, man, that's you want someone to inspire your team. And if he's there for those kids, that's the number one priority. So if he's looking for the betterment of them then the school that all takes care of itself so i think think so what, what about you jay listen man i think he's he's learned from this situation he's going to learn from the situation mm-hmm. um, i think he probably wouldn't necessarily go on social media and and, and go that route fully mm-hmm. anyway or hardcore um but at the same token i, I think the times of sweeping things under the rug or or keeping it in house, I think those days are over yep. um, to a certain degree. Uh, I think I think they'll do they will keep some things you know behind closed doors, but mm-hmm. um, they will go in and, and not shame, but just say, hey, this is kind of blatant here. One thing we gotta keep keep in mind though too, but Thune Cookman went on was under two hurricanes. Yep. Or experience two hurricanes, so uh, maybe just a little bit of time before things get uh, fixed or whatever. But at the same token, uh, I'm hoping that they're getting the attention uh, or the same amount of attention of getting things fixed as other schools or uh, facilities or whatever the case may be. I think that's one of the things that we need to keep in mind too. Yep. I believe Reggie Theus, the athletic director, he came out and said something here as well. But nonetheless, uh, I think Ed Reed will get. Uh, possibly another opportunity, but you best believe 
that university will highlight this situation and make sure that it is within a contract or very much so understood uh, at the top of them taking the reins that um, this this is our expectations of how you act yep. uh, um, via social media and otherwise. So we'll see, but I think he'll get another opportunity. I don't know how soon he'll get it. Um, and I think the school that gets him is pretty much going to be looking at the resources that he can bring with him. Thank you for joining us at Back Ports Talk Podcast. You can also join us on Twitter by tweeting us at back underscore podcast. For more information, you can go to our website, which is backporchtalkpodcast.com. You can also email us at backporchtalkpodcast at gmail.com. Again, thank you for joining us. And remember that there's enough hate in the world. So go ahead and spread a little love.